Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today just another very short educational video on the F-15. So I did a video about a week ago um, on, I can't remember exactly what I called it, but how to use the Pulse Doppler radar on an F-15. And uh, someone or a couple of guys picked up an error that I made during that video. And I think during that video I said, well generally when using um, the F-15 radar, you should always use track while scan TWS mode. Um, to lock up hostiles when you're engaging them. Uh, that's not true at all, or it's not how I meant it, so I'm going to quickly just clear this up in five minutes if I can. Uh, so very quickly, there are two different types of modes you can use the Pulse Doppler radar in the F-15, RWS and TWS. Um, so the RWS is the uh, default uh, setting, if you like, and it only allows you to track one single target when you've locked onto a target. Um, and that means that it basically puts all of the uh, beam energy from the radar focused on that one target. That has pros and cons. So the pro is that you get a really strong lock that's hard to break, obviously, because you've got all that energy coming out um, and, and directing onto that single target. Um, the the and so you can you can lock a target that's longer range. You can lock a target that's got a smaller cross section. You can lock a target that's manoeuvring better. But the the bad side of it is that a you only get to lock one target, um, so that um, if there's obviously more than one target, that's a problem. And um, b is that because there's so much energy tra traveling towards the hostile that they can detect they are being locked, which uh, gives them is a massive giveaway, obviously. Uh, as to your existence and what you're doing. Um, the other is track while scan TWS, which I, I usually recommend. Um, this is a little different. It uh, pulses less radiation from the uh, um, radar onto a target. Um, the benefit is that you can lock multiple targets at once and monitor um, all the different targets, hence the name track while scan, so you can track a target while scanning for others. So the pro is that yeah, you can lock multiple targets and that because you're pulsing less energy out, uh, it's not enough for the hostile to know that you are locking them. So that's a big tactical advantage, obviously. Uh, the con is that because you're pulsing less energy out, it's uh, less strong and of a track uh, of a lock, sorry, and so the hostile can evade that lock by turning their plane or doing whatever they need to do to get out of the lock. And you'll probably notice that when using it. Um, so I'm just going to go through a few scenarios to where I suggest using which type. So the track while scan is the one I try to use and I'll base my set up my fights if I can so that I can use that. And I'll always use it in what I call a stand up fight. Um, that's the ideal um, kind of Hollywood style. You're going charging at an enemy and an enemy is charging directly at you. No one's trying to evade, no one's trying to dodge, no one's trying to mask in terrain etc. You're just heading towards each other. So whether there's just a single target or multiple targets, I'll always use track while scanning this mode because they're not trying to dodge your radar. You don't need a particularly strong beam. I'll only be locking within 40 miles anyway. I only ever lock a target within 40 miles. There's no point of locking a target further than 40 miles. That has no tactical advantage. All you can possibly do is um, uh, effectively blind yourself by um, getting target fixation or warning a hostile that you're there. So I'll never lock, I'll always stay unlocked so I can get full situational awareness until within 40 miles, which is what I call the combat range, which is when I'll then lock my target. So if it's a stand-up fight, I'll use TWS, whether it's one target, target or multiple, because it gives me the tactical advantage at that point, um, because they don't know that I'm locking them, and I can lock more than one target. Also, if I'm chasing someone, which is quite often um, you'll have a fight with someone, uh, they will run away, which is very um, common, and you'll chase them. If you're locking them with a full RWS, they'll know that you're locking them and they'll just keep running away. So what I'll often do is uh, then switch to a TWS lock, so the hostile no longer knows that you're locking them, and often they'll think that you've uh, given up and uh, turned away, at which point they'll turn around to come and find you, and then you can blast them out of the sky. So it's a nice little trick that you can do to make the hostile th that you're chasing think that they that you've given up when actually you haven't. In fact, you've just changed the, your type of lock. So that's where I would use the track while scan lock. That's what I meant to say. Now we move over to the R RWS, which is the single stronger lock that you can only lock one target on. And here's where I would suggest using it. First is if you're at a long range, because it can be you can get a strong lock at a longer range than a TWS. So if you want to lock something at 60 miles or 
55 miles, then you can do that. However, I've never seen the advantage of locking something more than 40 miles. You're just going to lose situational awareness. You can't see the other hostiles that are around, and you'll give the target a warning that you're doing so. So, although you can do it, I don't suggest using it RWS at long range anyway. Uh, but it is much more useful on a manoeuvring target. Now, the majority of uh, fights that you're going to have, the target will maneuver, uh, be manoeuvring. It's very rare you'll actually get, like, a stand-up fight where you're just charging towards a hostile and hostile is charging directly towards you. Usually they're going to be beaming, they're going to be flanking, they're going to be ascending, they're going to be descending, they're going to be hot, cold and all sorts of uh, different angles. Uh, he might be looking to dive down behind a, in a, to a canyon or behind a mountain uh, or something like that, especially if you're chasing, chasing a Russian plane. They tend to want to use the cover because it suits their style of weapons better. Uh, then that is the time for a RWS lock where you've got the stronger lock where it's going to be harder them for, with more energy it's going to be harder for them to break your lock as they try and move through the terrain or through um, or, or maneuvering the aircraft obviously if they get behind any kind of terrain then they'll break any kind of lock that you put out but it's just going to give you the better um, uh, uh, lock for kind of a chasing a maneuvering target at um, I guess any range and now so far we've just been talking about actually locking the target in the two different modes we also use the, ra uh, the radar just for looking around and general scanning um, in fact uh, there's something to point out at this point I've been saying uh, RWS lock and TWS lock and RWS when you actually lock it lock onto a target I think is changes to uh, a different name I think it's STT or yes STT but I just call it RWS lock just because well, it's just what I've always called it Anyway, um, so we use so when using the radar for scanning, we can also use the RWS and the TWS mode. Um, what I find is the uh, RWS mode tends to be better on quicker at picking up general targets you, on the on your pull stop the scope. You'll only get just a, a mark, a line. You won't get any information about general scanning of general targets. But I tend to use it when you just need a real quick overview of how many hostiles in a general area. Um, and then, uh, but if you use the TWS mode for general scanning, I find it slower and it picks up targets not as well probably for the reasons that we uh, spoke about earlier, I guess, uh, but you get extra information about the targets. When you uh, are scanning on TWS mode, you can see the vector of each hostile aircraft and you can see, I think, uh, the altitude of each aircraft as well. So for a quick uh, snoop around, and if I'm in a close fight with someone, then I'll tend to have RWS just for scanning quickly and looking for targets. Uh, if I'm looking for a bigger, larger, picture overview of maybe more long range, slightly long range targets, then I like to use the TWS. Thank you for listening.